Hi, I'm Brandon. And I'm Megan. For years, we were stuck in a rut, always complaining that nothing ever changed for us. And then we realized, if we wanted to improve our lives, we had to put in the work. Each week on this podcast, we'll get into an aspect of personal growth, relationships, or just life. Through our own experiences and guest interviews, we hope to inspire you to make your own positive changes. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Fools in Love podcast. podcast. Welcome back to the Fools in Love podcast. Welcome back, y'all. We are so happy you're here. If you've been here before, welcome back again, I guess. And <laughs> if you haven't been here before, welcome, welcome. I just want to know how many times can we say welcome in one intro? That's a very, very strong thing. I, I don't know, but uh, thank you for bringing it up. And you're welcome. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Today, we are talking about living in the present. And for us, it's kind of been a thing recently where for whatever reason, we're just where the past keeps coming up or we keep worrying about the future and somehow the days are passing us by and the weeks are passing us by and we're in this weird kind of thing where all of a sudden we're like, oh my gosh, we should really focus a little bit more on the here and the now. It's so right. And like when I'm thinking about it, as you were talking, it's like, man, Like this whole COVID thing started happening like the beginning of March and now we're like at the middle of September and we're still talking about this thing and it's still like affecting all of us one way or the other. I think for me, that has a lot to do with the future part of it. Mm -hmm. But you're right. What constantly seems to come up and I'll speak for me and then you can speak for you is, is that feeling like Whatever happened in the past, it comes up because it's like, well, I'm I'm thinking about it. Not that you shouldn't think about the past, but like it shouldn't control your thoughts or really change your future unless you're just changing that behavior and moving on. But then I'm either doing that or I'm stressing about the future five years from now, 10 years from now, one year from now, six months from now, whatever. And I'm never actually enjoying the time I'm, I'm in. I kind of think of an analogy as I'm talking of like, well, with COVID, you can't really do this. But you know, you go to a concert or you like you go to an event and you see someone like take out their phone and they're like recording it on their phone. So they're not actually like enjoying the experience in real time. Like they're trying to record it for later, but they're missing out on the here and now. And that's a lot of what it's like when you're living the way that most of us seem to live. You know, I feel like that a lot. Like, when we're enjoying the moments and I don't take pictures or whatever, and then I'm like, man, I didn't take pictures. And I'm like, well, I, I did fail on the pictures, but honestly, I was present in the, in the whole event. So did I really lose out? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I will. Maybe one day I'll look back on it like, gee, I really wish I would have had pictures. But that comes up for me. Like even when I take like the kids to something and I don't take pictures, I'm like, will I care that one day our daughter will be in 12th grade and she'll need like pictures of when she was young and I won't have any of her and her friends because I didn't do it because I was letting them play. (laughs) Right. And like, what are you going to remember? I mean, certainly like the picture can like establish some memories, but like, what are you actually going to remember? You're going to remember the experience unless of course you're distracted by something else that's pulling you away from actually enjoying things in real time. And For me, I feel like in our relationship, what comes up a lot, and as you guys know, if you don't, if you haven't listened before, like we had a lot of relationship struggles. And like for me, a lot of the past things that happened just kind of come into my subconscious. Like usually when things are going well or things are either, well, it's one of two ways. Things are stressful. And so it comes up because I'm like getting kicked. I'm kicking my own self while I'm down or things are going well. And then for some reason in those moments too, it's like I'm bringing myself back down to a level where I feel like I deserve to be. And it's pretty deep, but like, it's like if I'm too happy, I catch myself remembering these things in the past from like a million years ago and thinking this, this is, this is what happened then. And so this is who you still are. This is how your relationship still is. And I bring myself back down to a level where. I'm like miserable, but somehow comfortable with that misery, which I think we can relate to all of us out there in one way, shape or form. Right. I mean, so to be a little more specific, basically back in the day when our marriage was almost done, 
Brandon had to live with me telling him that I wanted a divorce. And so obviously at that time he felt unloved. Well, today's, in today's day and age, here we are eight, nine years later, whatever. And that can st- that feeling when he's down, when he's putting himself down, either because he's already stressed or because he's happy and he wants to go down that level, he'll let that creep in. So sometimes he'll be like acting just a little bit different. And I'm like, I think he's having some hard times right now. And that's when he's trying to like grapple with those things where he might not feel all the love, even if I'm not even doing anything where he's just putting that back on, putting that past back into our current situation, which then affects our future situation because we're having struggles right now that are related to things that are already done and preventing us from being happy currently and several weeks, months down the line. Yeah. And the actual term for that is projection. Like I'm projecting. And what that means is the feelings that I have inside, I'm projecting or putting those onto you like that that's your belief because that's my own insecurity. So I'm saying those things to you and eventually it becomes self-fulfilling prophecy because if I keep saying those things to you, you might actually feel that way. And then it like my worst nightmare will come true type thing. And so I'm like projecting those feelings on you, even though that's not even there. It's something from the past. Right. And it's interesting too, because you know, like as we sit here today, you know how I feel about you. You know that I've said it a million times recently, like I love you more today right now, this minute than I ever have before. I feel stronger and more connected to you than ever before. Like our relationship is solid, but then there's just these times and these weak points where life just gets crazy and stressful and things just start to pop back up. And really that's kind of the idea behind this this whole episode is that sometimes our past and our future can really get in the way of our current happiness. It's so true. And and I was actually just listening to another podcast recently where they were talking about how like thinking about the past and like dreading on the past and like letting it weigh you down is really kind of a pointless procedure. I mean, certainly you don't want to repeat the past, especially if like bad things happen. You don't want to like redo that, go over that again. And they were by no means saying don't learn from the past. So that's not what I'm trying to say here. But delving on it, to the point where you're like, man, I really wish I could change that. You can't. You can change your current situation. You can change your future, but you're not going to change the past. And so in a way, it's it's other than that learning aspect, it's kind of a worthless procedure because you're going back in time to relive it, reopen old wounds, hurt yourself again for there to be no fix. Like there's no way to change it. What happened in the past? As you've heard, the past is the past. So I have to remind myself of that a lot, that like that is not serving me in any way. It's only pulling me down to a level where I don't want to be. And like Meg said, I know all the things she just said are true. But in those moments of stress or even the moments of happiness, those things creep into my subconscious and it's something that I truly have to deal with on like a regular basis. And then of course you guys already know that we struggle, we've both struggled in the past (laughs) in the past, with anxiety, depression, those kind of things. So worrying about the future or letting the future possibilities affect us is a super real thing for both of us. Right now with COVID, I think everyone kind of feels that way, like what's going to happen right now? What's going to happen next week? What's going to happen next month? And when will life get back to normal? And there's all this future thinking, right? We all have to think about like, when will it return? When will the kids go back to school? When will this? And I think that right now, because of all that, it's even harder to get yourself like, okay, yes, that stuff will all happen when it happens. But rather than freaking out about it right now, like let's bring it back and let's let's deal with what's currently in front of us. And that doesn't mean don't plan for the future. That doesn't mean don't make grand plans for your life. It just means that, you know, when those, when those ridiculous thoughts come in, when those hard thoughts come in, maybe those aren't serving you well. It doesn't mean like don't make your life plan because of course you should have a goal in your life, but really those destructive thoughts about your future are what we're talking about. Yeah. And that's one of the things we were just talking about last week in our episode. And we talked just about that, the limiting beliefs, but I didn't really think about it in the context of like the current environment of the world uh, that we're living in. I mean, the constructs of what's happening and the just uncertainty in every day and every month. I mean, what's it going to be like by December? What's it going to be like by 2021? Like I just was telling Meg, I'm like, so wait, there might not be like an in-person conference for all of 2021. 
And it's like, well, maybe there won't be for ever. I don't know. Maybe like the whole live event scene will change. I, I don't really know, but those things will like consume your thoughts. And for me, they definitely make it more difficult, even though like it wasn't clear to me until you were just talking about that. My planning for the future, it's like, is it even worth like trying to figure this stuff out because of the way things currently are? Well, Yes. That's, <laughs> yes, of course. And that's like not what I'm what I'm trying to like go up against. Like Meg said, it's a very important to plan and, and do things for the future. The thing is, we we just get caught in that place where the past is weighing us down. At least I do. The past is weighing me down on a regular basis. I start thinking about the future, worrying about the future. I'm anxious. And then I become depressed. And all of the the emotions that come up from either the past or the future, all the things that are stemming up in my brain during those times, they're actually changing my current reality. Like they're changing how I'm coming forth as a husband, as a spouse, as a boss, as a like business owner. Like every day those things are creeping in and they're making a real difference in the person that I'm going to be. Therefore, like I'm going to have more stress in the future because I'm not doing the things I have to do today to be prepared or to like set myself up for a quality future later. I love that you brought that up too, Rand, because for me, when I experience either side of this, when I'm living in the past and feeling depressed or when I'm living in the future and feeling anxious, I'm just really not who I am trying to be. So I'll be like, a less patient and I'm not patient to begin with. I'll be a less patient mom than I even usually am. Or I'll get mad at you for things that normally I just do and don't think about. Like suddenly me doing the laundry, which is not that big of a deal for me is like the world's worst thing just because it's not you and it's not any crazy thing. And you do plenty around the house to justify that I take most of the laundry, but suddenly like silly, dumb things like that are like a big problem for me. And that's just something that I've noticed about myself, especially is just like my lack of patience or tolerance for anything, even when it's normally a thing that I'm totally fine with. Yeah. And I I talked about like how I feel like for me personally, like I will, I'll level the playing field in my own mind. Like I'll bring myself back down. Do you find that that's true for you? Like when you're getting mad about like something is like, you know, minimal as like the laundry or something. Do you feel like that's you inside like leveling yourself out like saying like well i like are I, what i'm trying to say is like in those are you happy in those times and you're bringing it down or you're already in a negative space so you're like kicking yourself down further do you feel yourself trying to like level yourself out or or does that does that not make sense to you i think in the smaller moments i think it's usually that i'm already in a negative spot and rather than pull myself up like i know that i should do I think that's when I'm just kind of like, I'll I'll let myself go more negative. And that's when I'll let like, you know, the laundry failure of 28 of 2018, or there is no laundry failure of 2018, obviously, but I'll let something silly like that from the past pop back up and really irritate me now or just other small things like that. But I do totally understand what you're saying because I think for bigger, like grand scheme of life things, I do fully understand and grasp what you're saying because there are plenty of times when I'm like, man, life feels really good right now. Like I feel like, feel like this is one of the best years, get best months, best weeks, whatever. And then like something silly will like start to pop into my brain about like my past failures as a wife, as a mother, as whoever. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why, why am I like this? Why am I who I am? And those kind of thoughts will intrude, but it's usually on a bigger level. I think my day to day annoyances tend to be because I'm already upset and not doing what I should do to get myself out of it. Yeah, it's fascinating because like the thing we were talking about last week with the limiting beliefs is you start to recognize that that's happening. And that's probably the best thing you can do in this situation too, is recognizing that like, hey, I'm already going down a bad place and, and I'll just be real transparent right now. This week has felt like that for me. Like I was like, I'm coming off a holiday weekend. We had some family in town. Like it was, it was a, it was a great time. It was a great experience. I, I, I enjoyed it. But even during that time that we, I was like enjoying it, I found like ways to get irritated with you, for example, mm-hmm. like to bring like, it was like I was having too much fun. Like I was enjoying it too much. So I found little things to get like irritated with you over, even though any other time they wouldn't have even been a thing. It was like I was limiting myself. 
So then your happiness, limiting my happiness. Right. And then coming off of that weekend, as most of us do coming off a vacation, a long weekend, a trip, whatever you, it's hard to get back in the, in the, in the grips. And I feel like today we're recording this on a Friday. I feel like today I've gone this whole week and I'm like, I still don't have my feet under me. Mm -hmm. And so I almost feel like my excuse would be this week's kind of already gone. I even said this to Meg in full transparency. I was like, I just feel like this week's already lost. There's nothing else for me to do. You know, well, I, I'll get back to it next week. It's a very dangerous game, by the way. Right. Very dangerous. And and trust us, we struggle with this all the time because what if next week turns into like, well, maybe tomorrow and then next day after that and all of a sudden it's been like two weeks before you've really put in the work of the, the things that you know you should be doing. Right. And it, and it affects the day to day because now like we're behind on a lot of things we're supposed to be working on. Like I know in my mind that we're behind on them. And then like it causes stress and anxiety because I'm not living in the present moment. You have to be present in the present to make the future like what you want it to be. And like I have to remind myself of that because most of the time, and I know y'all can relate, you're doing things day after day. And even if they're the right things, they're small stepping stones. But over time, if things don't change right away, those stepping stones seem worthless almost to you, that they're not actually leading you anywhere, that they're leading you astray. But the things that you put down in the present are going to affect your future. But if you're constantly only thinking about the future and where you want to be in 10 years, you get stuck and you're not doing the work in the present to get to that place in the future. And what's going to happen is you're going to get to that place in the future and you're not going to be anywhere near where you need to be to be accomplishing those things that you've sent forth. You know, and something that we've both really done that kind of helps us keep keep in the present and not as much as it probably should because we both do kind of have that issue where it's harder to be in the present. But one thing that we've really found that is helpful to us is just gratitude, writing down things we're thankful for, because I'm not going to generally put down something that I'm thankful for that happened like three years ago, right? Like I'm going to think of like this morning or last night, like every single thing that I write down is just recent. And I feel like that has really helped me concentrate on what's going on currently in my life currently and what there is right now today to be thankful for. Right. Yeah. And, and I definitely do that too. And it's, it's, it's cool because you know that every day you're going to have to write down things you're grateful for. So like throughout the day, I'm, I'm not even really, but I'm, I'm subconsciously looking for things that I can be grateful for because I'm not going to write down the same five things every day. And so I want to make sure that I'm looking for things that I can put down that I'm grateful for, but that's in the moment. That's in the present time. That's today. Or if I'm filling out tomorrow, that's from yesterday. Or like, you know, if I'm filling out for that day, I'm like, these are things I'm looking forward to that are coming up today. But I'm becoming very present in that moment because I'm not thinking about the past or the future. I'm only living in my current circumstance, which is huge. And if you weren't experiencing your life as it was happening to you, you wouldn't be able to come up with a gratitude piece of it. Like if you were just simply living in the past or the future, how would you even how would you even see what's happening right in front of you? Which brings me to a really good point that I want to make sure I say is one thing that's super important for us to be able to live more in the present and worry less is putting down our phones. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. And the and the the best part is like never ever, maybe you have, I, I doubt it. Some of you out there might have, but when I'm filling out like my daily gratitude, I'm never like, I'm really thankful for my iPhone. Like <laughs> no. I'm just, I'm so thankful for this thing. It's really just adding so much value to my life. Thank you so much, Apple for making this beautiful iPhone. Sorry, Apple. But like, I, I've never once done that. And actually like, I feel so much like I need it in my life. And I'm definitely like, trying to sway away from the addiction of it. What I've actually done, um, I actually saw Jay Shetty uh, did this. If you haven't listened to his podcast, it's great. This isn't a plug, but like I, I enjoy listening to it. But he talked about how like he won't even have his cell phone in the house. Like He actually would put it... He was so bad with it, picking it up every day, that he'd put it out in his car and lock it and come back inside and then he'd go to sleep. And it would be the only way that he could prevent himself. And then eventually now, he's not still doing that. But by hearing the fact that he did that, I decided to try it. And and what I was doing is we were me and Megan wake up at 4 a.m. every day. I was waking up at 4 a.m. and I'd grab my phone and I'd pull out Instagram and I'd just click on Instagram. Then I'd go to my email and I'd click on my email. It teaches you to be very reactive. 
So like immediately you're waking up and you're reacting to everything that's going on. So what I've learned is I actually don't pick up my phone until six o'clock now. So like that might not seem like a big deal, but it was based on how I'm using it. And you would have to kind of assess for yourself how much you're actually using it and how much of like a detox, they like to call it a digital detox, that you're willing to do. But now I have two hours where I don't even think about my phone. And it gets really funny because I'm like, oh, I have all these things on my mind when I woke up. What do I do? What do I do? Like, and so <laughs> it's I, called a piece of right, paper. <laughs> so I pick up a, it's a novel idea, really. So what you do is you pick up a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, any kind of writing utensil, and you can write out your notes of the things you're thinking, and then you just put it in your pocket and you can remember it for later. That it's, is, it's crazy. That's amazing. I just <laughs> want to tell you that is truly, truly mind-boggling. Yes, but the times, the point is, the times where like I, I didn't have my phone, I, I don't ever miss it. I'm not sitting there thinking I need it, and over time, it's become easier and easier. It's just way easier to stay in the current moment when you're not being constantly pulled away with someone else's to-do list. Or just like for me, and I, I think you experienced this too, especially like the beginning of the coronavirus is just that you're constantly like consumed with like news and like that can be so anxiety indu- inducing. Like a lot of times I'm like, oh, this, the world freaks me out. And you just have to step away from that for a minute because if you just constantly worry about like what is going to happen in our world, and I'm not saying it's not important to know what's going on in our world or to do things about it, but if that's your constant thing, then you're just going to be miserable in your present. Right. And the other thing I do is just, and we've talked about it a little bit, but it's stopping those thoughts when they happen. You have to start assessing what's going on in your own mind because until you're able to do that and able to like figure out what's going on and then reverse what's going on and understand those thoughts and understand what's about to happen because I can feel them coming on. And I have, even though I still struggle, I've gotten a lot better with these strategies of figuring out that those thoughts are happening, understanding that they're not serving me and kind of pushing them out and bringing that happiness and gratitude piece back in. Yeah. Right along with that too. I would say that if it's something that relates to like you as a couple or you as a teammate or you as you and a parent and child, if there's another person involved or even I guess if there's not and you just want to talk it out with somebody, I think that it's really important to address what's happening with that other person. Because if you don't, then you're just going to let that fester in your mind. And again, it's not going to go anywhere. You're just going to completely derail not only your present, but also possibly your future because you're just not letting this piece out into the open where it can be dealt with and cleaned up, cleaned up and moved on from. Beautifully said, beautifully said. And I actually think about it as like a dump, like you're dumping that information out. You're putting it out in the open because if it's living inside, it can almost like it gets strength and it can grow. But there's something for me where if I share something with you that I'm struggling with, and a lot of times you have to pry out of me or you just ask the question. I wouldn't say pry at this point, yeah. but you'll ask the question and I'll open up to you. And it's like, I feel my shoulders rising. Like the weight is coming off because I'm not holding it in by myself anymore. It's like, I'm, it's I'm, sharing, it, yeah, yeah. I'm sharing it with you and you're actually helping me hold it up. And like, you have to find a person in your life that's not going to judge you for that because clearly that can read down, lead down the wrong path. And sometimes you just have to test it out and see what's what. Because I know a lot of us have been hurt and you can't just stay guarded either. Because a lot of these things we try to hold on by ourselves and I know we're all capable of amazing things. But sharing those things actually is like so freeing to me when I can share something with you or someone else that I know. And it's like, wow, it's out in the open now. So I don't have to feel like I'm hiding something or like, you know, being weird about something. And it's like so confusing to you on the other end. And most of the time I think you would be like, and I'm the same, but you would be like, wow, like I I feel so much better about it because you might have been having your own anxiety like it was you. Like the problem was you right? or the problem was like our kids or the problem was like our job or whatever. And it like it was none of those things. It's like this inner thing that I'm working out. But when I'm willing to share that with you and even more importantly than just sharing it, you're acknowledging the struggle, right? You're acknowledging what happens. Not to name drop, but like Brendan Bouchard always says, like honor the struggle. You have to honor the place that you're in acknowledge that it's happening, and then grow from that. I love that. The only way you can grow is by acknowledging it and talking about it. And so if you're hiding those things in, you're only going to constantly keep pulling yourself down at a place where it's like, you could be free. You could be free to do so many things. Because like I said, it's just, it's, it's so 
freeing to be vulnerable. This is off topic, but it's so freeing to be vulnerable and actually like allow someone else in because you not only get their feedback, but like you just feel free and like the weight's lifted off your shoulders. Yeah. Don't carry the load when you don't have to. I mean, it's going to just, it's going to exponentially improve your life when you have somebody that can just be that person, whether it's related to them or not, where you can just talk about those things. And I know it went a little bit off topic, like Brandon was saying, but I think it's super important to have that person. Yeah. So I hope you can use a lot of these strategies that we were talking about. I I think so often you can get stuck with this idea of past or future and we forget about this present moment that we're living in. And a lot of times, like if you pay attention and you try some of these strategies and you do some of these things, the moments you're living in, the people you interact with are put in your path for a reason. And so they can open your eyes to things in the future that you couldn't even have ever dreamed of. But if you don't have your eyes open and you're living with blinders or constantly looking back or forward, you can't actually experience the current moment that you're in and live like the most fulfilling and happy life that you can. Hey, B, what did you think of that episode? I think it was pretty dang good. Well, what should someone do if they enjoyed these last 30 minutes? They should probably head over and leave us a review so we can reach more people. They definitely should. Guys, if you like the Fools in Love podcast, please go follow us over on Instagram at Fools in Love Podcast. We'd love to connect with you and learn more about what you'd like to hear. 